What's up everybody? I got a lot of really good feedback on my Time Crisis video showing how I've got all the games in the series running with my Send and Light Gun, uh, my Infinity Pedal, and launching through Launchbox, Big Box. So wanted to do a series of videos just showing in detail how I have each one of those games set up and configured. So we're going to start today with Time Crisis 5. I actually go on kind of in reverse order just based on some of the questions and comments I've received. Figured I'd start with that. So Time Crisis 5 is a little bit different than the other games in that it is a Windows application. So you don't need any emulator to run it. Uh, it's just a, a Windows EXE. As far as I know, it's only for Windows. So if you're a, a Mac or Linux person, Sorry, you might be out of luck with that. So when you download the game, you'll get a folder that looks like this. Um, there's a couple of extra things in here. I will talk about those in a little while. But primarily, you'll have this data and then this TC5 folder. And in here, under binaries, Win64, you'll have this Time Crisis game, Win64Shipping.exe. Now, you can't actually just double click on this and run it. Uh, you need to pass some command line arguments. And so usually it's packaged with a start.bat or a tc5.bat that will have the command to run that. So if you double click this file and run it, the game will run. But you don't want to do this every time, so we're going to integrate this together with Launchbox and actually replace this bash file with an auto hotkey script that we can use to, to do all sorts of different things including remapping some of the buttons. After you've got this downloaded, you're gonna need another piece of software called Demo Shooter. And you can get that right here. I'll drop a link in the description. This is just a GitHub project. So you'll download this zip and extract it. Now you can extract it anywhere and have a global implementation. I've actually decided to just put a Demo Shooter installation in with the Time Crisis 5 folder so that it's specific to this game. Once you've got that, if you're mapping this to your send and light gun, if you open this folder, you'll see a couple different applications here. You're going to want to launch the demo shooter GUI.exe. So we'll go ahead and launch that. And what this is going to do is this is going to set up a configuration to tie the input to the specific device, in this case, the light gun. What this is going to ask you for is which player you want to configure. We're going to leave this on P1 for Time Crisis 5. And then it's going to ask you to pick your device. So you see this whole list of devices in here. How do you know which one is the right one? So you'll open up Windows Device Manager. And then under your COM and LPT ports, you're going to find your Send and Light Gun. And in this case, I know it is COM6. You'll right click on that. Click on Properties, Details, and then pick Hardware IDs from under here. And what you'll see is these two values, this VID 16C0 and the PID 0F01. So that's the unique identifiers for my Send and Light Gun. And so now that I've taken note of those in Demo Shooter, you'll see out of the list, I've picked the one with VID16C0 and PID0F01. So once I've selected that, I go ahead and click Save Config. So once you've got this set up, you're done with the GUI application, you can go ahead and close it. So the next step is to set up an auto hotkey script to actually execute some applications and run the game. So go ahead and take a look at this. This top stuff is just boilerplate when you create a new auto hotkey script. Uh, the single instance force just ensures there's only one instance of the script running at any time. And then the set working directory is just going to put this script in the context of this Win64 directory in the, the Time Crisis folder. This next section here, what I do since I'm launching this from a front end, I want the application and all of the attached applications to start in a known state. So what I do here is I check to see if the light gun application is already running. 
And if it is, I go ahead and close it. Then I'll wait a second and then I will reopen it. So this ensures that let's say I, for some reason the light gun app was already running, maybe the border was already up. For this game, I want the application running, but I don't want the border uh, to be generated by the application. I'm gonna be doing that through Reshade and I'll show you that in a bit. So this logic here just closes down the light gun application and then starts it up in a known good configuration. This next line here is setting up the biped application. So if you want to know more about this, go check out the video on the infinity pedal that I put together. But this is the application that's going to map those pedals to keyboard inputs. So I've got an incorrect comment here. The left button is the T key. The right pedal is the Y key. But the middle, this 2000 is actually the middle mouse button. In reality, I don't use the middle pedal at all for Time Crisis 5. If you're not familiar, it uses a two pedal system. So I'm just using the left and right pedals to actively control something in the game. So after launching that, I run Demo Shooter. And it's critical that you run the X64 EXE version of it. And then you pass in these command arguments target ES3 and ROM is TC5. So this is going to start up and, and run and then it's going to bind to Time Crisis 5 when it's running. And then finally, I'll just wait a second to make sure everything's up and then I launch Time Crisis with this no any flag, the language flag. In this case, it's Japanese. There's a bunch of different language flags that you can pass in here. I've tried several. Everything is always in English when I try them. So I'm not sure exactly what this does, but I'm just leaving it as uh, Japanese because it seems to work perfectly. And then this play side argument. Uh, the game does not yet support actual two player, but you can pick in single player mode which side you want to play from. So in this case, I'm using play side one. There are some optional arguments to this. Let's say you're playing on a 4K display. You can pass in the arguments res X and res Y and then pass in the resolution that you want. And that'll get you uh, an upgraded resolution, assuming your graphics card and PC can handle the upscaling. I'm leaving mine as default, which is 1920 by 1080. Next, we get into the button mapping. So, I've got the number one key as well as a dedicated insert coin button on my gamepad here mapped to shift T, which is going to insert a coin for the arcade. So kind of like a start button. And then the number five here is shift H, which is going to toggle the crosshairs on and off. And the other reason I picked one and five is that is a button that's mapped on my send and light gun um, to either insert a coin or send a five to turn the crosshairs on or off. I don't use the crosshairs at all, but it's there if I need it. Next, we've got the middle mouse button. If you click that, what that's going to do is actually send the scroll wheel down one click. And this is used for, in the arcade, there's a button on the side of the gun that allows you to skip past cutscenes. It also allows you to change your weapon. This is just going to map the middle mouse button, again, another button on the send and light gun to a scroll wheel that act activates that function in the game. And then finally, if at any point I press the escape key, it's just gonna kill everything. So it'll kill the game, kill biped, we sleep for two seconds, then we close the light gun application. And then finally, we just completely exit out of the auto hotkey script. So sorry if that was a, a long-winded explanation. If you want to skip over that, that's fine. I'll make this script available. There'll be a link in the description. Just a couple other things to, to finish this off. I can show you here that in this Time Crisis 5 configuration under launching, I've just got my application path set to that auto hotkey script. And then in emulation, I have the emulator turned off. 
So this is just going to call the script and that auto hotkey script is going to take it from there and launch everything. But I can double click on this in launch box or this also appears in big box, select it from there and boom, the game launches. One of the issues that I was seeing with this though is on my display here, the way I've got things set up, it actually looks best to me if I scale this to 125%. This was causing a bunch of problems with Demo Shooter as far as the pointing the light gun at the screen. The shots were not landing where I was aiming. They were offset by some value. And it tracked it down to this scale here. So the way you can solve that, if you do have that problem on your side, is going back to that EXE. So TC5 binaries, Win64. If you right click on this EXE under properties, compatibility, change settings for all users, change high DPI settings, go ahead and check this box and set this to application. This will override the Windows scaling and just scale everything based on the application and solves any uh, offset problems that could be caused by that. Finally, I mentioned that reshade is the solution that I was using to display the border on the game. With the game being actually full screen, I was having issues with the Sindon border actually showing up on top of it. So reshade is just a super easy option to generate a border in the game. So if I look at reshade here, if I go ahead and select a game, Got a couple things pop up, but I'm just going to go to Time Crisis 5, Binaries, Win64, and then go ahead and pick this EXE. Um, I believe it uses DirectX 9. Click on that, and then I've already got it existing, but you'll go ahead and install it and make sure on the installation, you want the sweet FX set of shaders. I'll drop a link in the description to the Sindon wiki that talks more about reshade. So we'll go ahead and close that. So we'll go ahead and launch this here. You'll see a pop up and if you look at the top left hand corner of the screen you'll see a little message about reshade so if you press the home key you get the reshade configuration and you'll see that i've got this border fx selected and it's generating a fi uh, 15 pixel solid white border and so that's where this is coming from and so this will generate this each time the game launches and so with the light gun application running in the background i've got tracking with my light gun right from from launching it so everything gets started up everything is ready to go you don't need to push a button to generate the border you don't need to to do anything special the game's just set up and ready to play right after launching through the front end so I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try to respond to them and look for more videos on how I've got things set up coming soon. Thanks, everybody.